Standing only 5 foot 2 inches tall, Buckminster Fuller loomed over the 20th century. Admirers affectionately called him Bucky, but the name he gave himself was Guinea Pig B. His life, he said, was an experiment. When he was 32, Buckminster Fuller's life seemed hopeless. He was bankrupt and without a job. He was grief-stricken over the death of his first child, and he had a wife and a newborn to support. Drinking heavily, Buckminster Fuller contemplated suicide. Instead, he decided that his life was not his to throw away. It belonged to the universe. Buckminster Fuller then embarked on an experiment to discover, in his words, what the little, penniless, unknown individual might be able to do effectively on behalf of all humanity. To this end, Buckminster Fuller spent the next half century searching for ways of doing more with less so that all people could be fed and sheltered. Although Fuller never obtained a degree in architecture, he was an architect and engineer who designed revolutionary structures. Fuller's famous Dymexian house was a prefabricated pole-supported dwelling. His Dymexian car was a streamlined three-wheeled vehicle with the engine in the rear. His Dymaxian air ocean map projected a spherical world as a flat surface with no visible distortion. But Fuller is perhaps most famous for his creation of the geodesic dome, a remarkable sphere-like structure based on theories of energetic, synergetic geometry, which he developed during World War II. Efficient and economical, the geodesic dome was widely held as a possible solution to world housing shortages. Although his Dymaxian car never caught on, and his design for geodesic domes is rarely used for residential dwellings, Fuller made his mark in areas of architecture, mathematics, philosophy, religion, urban development, and design. In 1967, he was chosen to design the U.S. Pavilion at the Montreal World Expo. Since Expo officials said that the pavilion's exhi exhibits shouldn't be trade fairs, the pavilion's designers decided to show the craftsmanship, inventiveness, and creativity of the American people. Entitled Creative America, they did this by exhibiting used spacecraft, Elvis Presley's guitar, Raggedy Ann dolls, an Andy Warhol pop art painting, and several hundred other examples of American culture, past and present. Located on the western tip of Ile saint hélène the United States of America Pavilion was undoubtedly one of the most memorable of Expo 67, even if it initially sparked controversy as some people felt it was too daring. Architect Fuller's geodesic dome quickly became one of the most prominent symbols of Expo 67. With this pavilion, Fuller created the largest ge geodesic dome in history. As early as the 1950s, the visionary and eloquent architect had experimented with space frame structures which were to ensure trustless and at the same time climatically protected spaces in huge dimensions. The supporting framework consisted of a lightweight assembly of bars that was welded together at nodes. The bars had to be connected to a total of 5,900 nodes, of which there were 82 different types. The space frame was composed on the outside of triangles and on the inside of hexagons. On the inner framework, 1,900 arched acrylic glass segments were fitted into the hexagon. The result was an interior space of 190,000 cubic meters in volume, which was flooded with light. The exhibition platform stood freely in the room like a large sculpture, without touching the dome, which had an almost weightless effect. To control the sunlight and heat, the panes were tinted green and bronze. In addition, some segments in the zenith of the dome were fitted with awnings made of aluminum coated fabric, which a motor made unfold, depending on the position of the sun. The pavilion looked particularly attractive at night, when the sphere glittered from the inside like a cut crystal. 